Hello everyone, it's Friday and I'm back and I'm glad to be here with you guys. I hope you're glad to be here for a no llama drama Friday. Indeed. Yes, Chance, hello. How's everybody today? I missed you guys. Kinda. I did. I missed you. Oh, Chance thinks he has to get up here. I just have to find a place to move stuff for a moment. Just for a moment. So pardon me while I try to organize myself, which is always a challenge. <laughs> always a challenge. One of these days I have to stop and I have to clean my studio. That's where you are. You're in my studio. Yes. All right. I now have room for the cat who is determined he's coming up here. Indeed he is. He is determined that he should come up and say hello. Can you hear him? <laughs> hello, Christy. Hi, Kellyanne. Hi, Patricia. Nanette. Hello, hello, Terry. Always room for a sponsor, I know. Hi, Franna. Dana, hello. Good to have you in the chat today, Miss Dana. Good to have you here. All right. We're going to have a quick swill. Oh, yes. Come on. Oh, sponsor time. Sponsor time. Here he is. This is Chance. If you don't know Chance, this is Chance. Charlie's wandering around on the floor. Oh, goodness, you guys. I don't know if some of you... Let's see if I can get this. Whoops. Sorry. Give him a, get him a little straighter with the world because if he's not straight with the world, it looks like he and I are falling on our heads. <laughs> anyway, it is Friday. It is no drama, no llama drama, no drama llama. Friday. How's everybody doing? Yeah, here's Chance. Charlie's on the floor wandering around. Are you coming? Are you coming up? Are you going to come say hello to your fans? Are you? Okay. You're coming to say hello to everyone. Your fans await. Your fans. Yes, your fans are waiting for you. Uh, let's not do that, Chance. Let's not do that. Okay. Let's turn the other way. Turn the other way. Face the camera. Okay, face the camera. That's always good. <laughs> hello, Purple Nana Linda, right? Jan, hello. Oh, you know, have you heard of the term herding cats? <laughs> this is what we do here. We herd cats. These are the sponsors. I am Barb Owen. You have landed, in case you're new, whether you stumbled onto the recording, which by the way, if you did, if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching the recording. Um, I'm Barb Owen and you are in my studio. Welcome to my studio. You're actually at my table where I do most of my work with two cats, Siamese cats. This one is Chance. He's a blue point Siamese. This is Charlie. He's a chocolate point Siamese. Poor old Charlie boy is getting old. I guess we all are. I guess we all are, technically. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I choose to not act like I'm old uh, most of the time. Although, yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, of course, Dana, go get whatever you need. You know how I am. We just talk for a while. Um, hello, Tink. Hi, Barbara. Yes, um, Charlie is really having a rough time, aren't you? But he's still purring. He's purring, purring like crazy this morning. He's just having a hard time. Breathing is our breathing takes up most of Charlie's um, energy. Most of it. 
So Chance is the one who takes care of everybody. He's the one that takes care of everybody around here, including me. And he just slobbered all over me. What is up with that? What is up with that? Why are you slobbering? Yes. Why are you? Yuck. Anyway. Um, yeah. Hi, Gail. Hi, Mickey. Good Drama Free Friday. Exactly. We call this Drama Free Friday. Um, you guys are not really cooperating very much with the camera, so we'll just go back this way from now. Yes, I know. Your set's a good boy. There's no real good shot with these kitty cats. Um, I got back last night and from a trip, so I was gone last week. Hi, Tori. Hi, Mary. Um, 54 was a good year. Hello. Hello. Unfortunately, I wasn't born in 54. <laughs> But it was a good year. Hello. Um, so anyway, yeah, I had a um, the little gal that she's a physical therapy student here at the University of Missouri, and she helped me with Clausman for not not a whole year. She started in May, and she helped us through the first part of December. And so she knows the cats and the dog and the routine and the house and all that stuff. So she stayed here and took care of everything so I could leave and have a vacation. The first vacation I've had in a very, very, very long time. Real vacation. Like not go see family, but go away and just go. It was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you more about it here in a little while. So how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. Yeah. You know, Claus Man and I used to vacation every year. Uh, we vacationed mostly on motorcycles, and he had, um, we had a Honda Goldwing that was pretty decked out, pretty tricked out with a windshield, fancy windshield that had, don't, don't do that. Just, just don't do that, okay? Just, just don't put, just don't moon the camera, Chance. We call them the sponsors of How to Get Creative and the YouTube channel here. We call them the sponsors because most of the time they let me stream. <laughs> oh, they are a handful. They have been they have been absolutely attached to me since I got back last night. Followed me, attached themselves to me. They laid on my lap. Put it down, Jans. They laid on my lap. They were both on me. And my little uh, gal that my little student that was here, she loves them and they love her, but, you know, it's just not the same as having mom back. Anyway, um, we used to uh, vacation every, pretty much every year. All right, you can get out oh, now. By motorcycle. Okay, it's time for them to go away. I'll be back. Yes. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. cat drugs works wonders <laughs> anyway we motorcycled I was a uh, believe it or not I am a licensed motorcycle mama uh, good to see you too Mary um, oh, they're slobber. They are cat slobbers. Hi, Connie. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, I was a motorcycle mama. I rode a Honda CX-500, which was a pretty good sized bike. My husband, Claus Mann, had the Goldwing, Honda Goldwing. And we also, we had two different Goldwings. I know this is, has nothing to do with what we're doing today. <laughs> We had a black Honda Goldwing that he bought. We bought both of our bikes used. We never bought anything new. My bike had been wrecked, and he put it back together and fixed it up for me. 
Um, the first one, the black one, we had a bullet-shaped uh, sidecar, and that's what race went with us and rode around the country. And then after that, we bought a different, it was a maroon-colored Goldwing, fancier, more, it was newer, and it had a fancy sidecar, kind of a wedge-shaped sidecar. And we had a trailer, and we pulled that trailer with our gear in it. We went all over the United States in that rig. Dorothy had a bike license, too. Good for you. Hi, hi, um, Dar. Let's see, who else? Anybody? Anybody that I missed? I'm so glad you're here. We just kind of shoot the breeze to start with. Um, so anyway, that's how we traveled and that's how we vacationed and we went lots of, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and hundreds and hundreds of miles riding. Uh, sometimes we were all three on the same bike and sometimes it was Clausman and Race on one bike and me on the other one. Hello, Sherry. Good to have you here. Um, yeah, so back in the day, I wore black leather overalls, which I couldn't put my left leg in now, I'm sure. I gave those away. I gave them to somebody who was actively still riding. And I'm sure my left leg wouldn't fit in those. But I had black leather overalls and claws men. Had, I mean, we had the part. And black leathers, leather pants and leather overalls are not to look cool. Some people think that. But they uh, leather goes a lot further in case you get dumped off the bike. It goes a lot further than your skin does if you're sliding down the highway, which happened to me once. That's enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> that is enough. Yes, that is enough. We had many, many adventures, Mary. We certainly did many, many adventures. I... I have a whole entire trunk. This is how terrible I am at scrapbooking or even putting pictures in an album. All my pictures, for the most part, are in a trunk, in packets. <laughs> That's, at least they're not in my phone. Now they're in my phone. Uh, now what I do is I print off the pictures on two by three, two inch by three inch prints on my sprocket printer, personal printer. And I often print them uh, like one by two, let's see, one by one and a half. So I get four prints on those little pictures because I don't need the detail of the pictures. All I need is the, um, you know, the remembering, you know, just to jog my memory. So now I print those off and I use those in my journals like, like this. Okay, so I will put them in my journals and um, like so and then I will journal around the pictures so I don't use a lot of personal pictures I don't use a lot of pictures of myself or um, people unless it's somebody that I'm visiting like for example this is a couple that we visited when we were in Colorado and so you know there's a picture of them in there but for the most part um, I don't do that. For the most part, I'm journaling and putting in pictures of the experience. And these little ones like this are big enough for me to get the, the flavor of what I was doing. So anyway, so this, that was a long-winded explanation to say this was the first vacation I've been on in a really, really long time. <laughs> Oh, good, Kelly. Kellyanne, that's good. Hi, Jean. Um, it was really, it was really, really good. I know, Mary, right? Hi, Amber. Good to see you. So, yeah. Um, I, I have on my, my best shirt for you today. <laughs> Not the one that's falling apart it seems well it's falling apart everywhere you know I always wear out the left elbow I don't know why the right one doesn't wear out I'm right-handed but I wear out the left elbow the shirt is actually shredding <laughs> it's shredding you guys anyway so that's I was in Colorado for a week and um, it was great it was great 
the patch is, um, if I can show you, the patch is actually leftover dyed fabric. Um, it was a printed black dots on white fabric, and then it was from a class. It was leftover um, dyed stuff, so I think I just mopped up the dye and then turned it into an elbow patch. All right, so let's see, where are my notes? Yep, so I told you who I am, I think, didn't I? Barb Owen, that is me. It's howtogetcreative.com is the website where we have all of our classes and courses and so forth. Um, more coming soon, and um, so you're welcome to come over there and join us. We will be making some changes at some point, but right at this red hot moment, um, I'm not going to make any changes at this moment <laughs> because... I've had so many changes in my life in the last couple of years that two or three years actually that I'm not going to make any changes right this second because I got to kind of let the dust settle still a little bit so anyway uh, so where in the world was I last week I'll be, if you guys came and checked out to see where I was and I was not here it's because I was gone and I was in the mountains of Colorado I was in a little town called Fair Play and it's a 10,000 feet elevation. I live at, I think it's 800 feet elevation or something like that. That's a big difference. <laughs> I found out that products, uh, like uh, product, like hair products and you know, all that kind of stuff does not like that kind of altitude change. <laughs> I opened one, it was my conditioner and it goes, man did it blow conditioner everywhere of course that stuff is slick and, the, and it blew it in the bathtub and i'm like oh man i gotta clean that up so we don't nobody slips on that stuff that was crazy <laughs> sherry the fan of the grunge look yeah really so anyway where is everybody today if any of you would like to share on social media that you're over here um that would be excellent and anytime I take a week off, it kind of throws everybody for a loop because they're like, oh, she may not be back for a while. But usually I only miss a week. Okay, what else do I have going on? So uh, I know I've missed a couple of Fridays earlier this year, and I missed a bunch. I missed almost a year last year. Um, but the ones that I took off earlier this week were to go visit family and spend time with family. So... Hey, Ruth. Hey, Becky. Good to see you. Hi, Linda. You love my hair? Thank you. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you? Um, tomorrow is the VIP class. So all VIP members of howtogetcreative.com, your VIP class is tomorrow. The email will go out later today because I haven't written it yet. <laughs> Quite honestly, I haven't written it yet. And uh, what we're doing is last, what's a continuation of last month. So last month I took a picture of a sunflower at a friend's house. It was a beautiful, beautiful picture. Uh, not because I took it, but it was the perfect picture with the sun and the colors and the shape of the sunflower. It's absolutely beautiful. And then I showed the VIP members last month how to look at a picture, a small picture, and, and then draw it, sketch it. There are lots of ways to do that. You know, you can do things through Photoshop and other photo editing software programs and apps and all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't train your eye. It can be really accurate, it can be really fast, but it doesn't train your eye. And so that's what I used last month um, to help people learn how to see and to also um, draw what you see. And there are lots of ways to do that as well. You can use a grid method. You can use all kinds of things. I just wanted you to have an exposure to just using your eye and drawing what you see. So we did that last month. And so that we've created the sketch. And then this month, I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to paint the background and how to actually paint the sunflower with acrylics. And it's not going to be anything complicated or fancy, but it is, I think it turned out really pretty. And then next month, probably next month, we'll do the, we're going to add stitch to it. So it's going to be a truly mixed media piece when we're done. 
and it's from a photograph that I took so you can use it as you wish so if you wish wish to make prints of your work and sell them or if you wish to um, make prints and make them into um, like note cards or greeting cards and that kind of stuff and you want to sell them you can do that okay all right all right um hello Faye and Tara hello hello hi Tracy yeah it was good so anyway I was high up in the mountains high high up in the mountains it was and I had been warned by several people that I had to be really careful with the elevation I think they all think I'm old really old <laughs> I guess I am we're having coffee today I also have tea right back here so to keep the keep me um, hydrated it is hot here I'm gonna tell you something Colorado was chilly chilly compared to what I'm used to we're in the I don't know what temperature we are experiencing today let me look and see where we are at the moment it was really I think I missed a lot of the heat but I think we're back being hot again it was really warm when I was out earlier today my weather app is here we go it's only 89 but it probably feels like it's some horrible temperature feels like yeah it's 89 feels like it's 97 does that tell you anything anyway where I was last week the uh, temperature was down in the 40s low 40s at night and then it would get up into the maybe the 80s maybe during the day but of course it was dry so anyway I'd been warned you know oh you're probably gonna get altitude sickness and you know headaches and this and that and something else and I'm like people have me scared to death <laughs> hey Petra oh from Sweden welcome welcome so it's a hundred plus in Greenville oh my goodness yeah so it was um the temperature was it was really beautiful it was really I, man when it's a hundred and something where you live it is so hard to think about pack, packing flannel shirts and long sleeves and stuff i'm glad i did though because it was it was chilly all right so how are you guys doing how are things in your world tell me about you put it in the chat so i can see any of you that stumble onto this crazy place where we are called Barb's studio Barb's very messy studio um, this is a live show it is a live chat you can if you are a member a subscriber for the channel which I hope that you are um, you do have to be a subscriber in order to comment that is because we were having not just us but live streamers in general were having trouble with um, some ne'er-do-wells shall we say so you do have to be a subscriber for 10 minutes once you're a subscriber for 10 minutes then you can enter the chat and you can talk and ask questions and so forth uh sherry's having iced coffee lot Ooh, nice oh by the picture you make it by the picture i'm so jealous i'm so jealous amber says it's only 80 and not too human well wow, i forgot what state are you in amber i forgot Gotcha, Gail. Got ya. Big hugs to you, Gail. I understand sometimes it's not things are not fit for chat. I understand. So big hugs to you. Um Oh, Barbara, good for you. She's studying for a, a, a written driver's test. Well, good for you. Water and lemon. Ice water and lemon. I drank a lot of water last week. I did do that. was funny one person warned me on the way driving to Colorado um, said oh you should have started drinking water several days ago <laughs> okay you know what you can't shoulda coulda done anything anyway I survived I survived um 
Oh, that's nice. Dorothy just finished and mounted her entries for the Stitchers ex exhibition starting on the 14th. Well, good for you. Good for you. Ooh, Connie says it's 92 and feels like 102. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I honestly did not have any problem with it, with the altitude shift. Um, I'm so grateful. Okay. So let's um, let's get started, shall we? I titled this. Oh, here uh, now I'm going to show you something before we get into the <laughs> before we get into the crazy today. I took work with me because in my infinite smartness, I thought, well, you know, I'm probably going to have downtime, and so I will take work with me. I have this real fear. It has been in me since I was a kid that I would have time and nothing to fill the time. And I would just have to sit. It would be like my worst nightmare to just have to sit and do nothing. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. I'm going to blame my mother. How's that sound? And so I will load up, you know, a couple of tote bags of stuff and take it with me. Now, one of the tote bags... Um, I did actually use because when I was riding, I drove a little bit, but mostly rode. I drove a couple hours just to help spell the driver. And and um, anyway, the other bag I took. This is this is the real work I needed to get done, or I thought I needed to get done. Took it with me. It took a lot with me because I thought, oh yeah, that's that's important that I have all this stuff. I'll show you how much I got done. First of all, let's take a look at this. Um, this is what we'd worked on the last, I think the last time I was with you, this is what we worked on, this piece. I've been working on, this is for a new project that's coming up. So I have several of these done, not as many as should be done, but I, this was the last one we did, I believe, and then this one. Some of the, I think most of these I did with you guys, actually. So I have three of them completely done. I had a fourth one, but we used it and put it in the journal. So this is how much I got done. I took all of this with me, all of these things. These are all individual pieces of things I'm going to do. And a pull pad of watercolor paper and all of this stuff to do. And this is how much I got done. <laughs> this is how much I got done. Nothing. Zip. Okay? Zip. Yeah, so I just thought I would show you that Barb doesn't always accomplish what she sets out to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is pretty, but it certainly didn't, I certainly didn't get accomplished what I intended to. All right, so what we're going to do today is um, talk about burrow days. Mm -hmm. Burrow days. Any of you from Colorado or from that area probably are familiar with burrow days. And so I printed off some stuff. If I can figure out where it is. Where did I put it? Yes, here it is. And Burrow Days takes place in Fair Play, Colorado. And so what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to do an art, I probably won't get the whole thing done. I never get the whole thing done when I'm streaming, quite honestly, because I'm either too blooming slow, or I talk too much, or I my body gives out before my head, before the project gets done. I will admit to you that I am fatigued and tired today. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't come through. <laughs> I did have a great time. I really did. Um, <laughs> no, right, Linda? That's what happens to me. Then hubby moans, why did I need to take so much stuff? Hi, Tam. I know. I didn't get complained at, which was nice. That was good. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, take do an art journal page. We'll start on it. Maybe I'll finish it next week. You never know. You never know. This is an old art journal that um, I have been working in for I don't know how long. So we're just going to kind of add to it. So I'll show you. I'll take you through this art journal, which is kind of pathetic. 
This particular one is my junk. It's the junk art journal where I put all kinds of like, you know, used products. So this is, although I like it a lot, these were from a stencil, a couple of stencils where I had sprayed it with, I don't know, ink or something. And a lot of it is just used up paint, you know, leftover paint that I just slapped in this journal. This I really like. <laughs> it's nice when you like something, right? Um, thank you to those of you who um, shared the the fact that we're streaming today. That It was really nice of you. Thank you. This was from a VIP class. This was where I taught how to draw this knight in shiny armor. And... So this was doing an art journal page using your your protector. So this was, you know, this was drawn, um, not using a pattern, but just drawn. Here's the other one. Because I always have to do things in multiples. <clears throat> always have to do it in multiples. You can't do one of anything, um, not when you're teaching a class. It's always multiples. Some of the stuff in this journal... You know, like many, most of the art journal pages are not finished. Um, this was where I was testing something. Uh, this was painting flowers with a using a palette knife. More testing. So I will do that frequently in an art journal. I'll just test products, and then this is oh, who knows what it is? It doesn't make any difference. And this was. This page over here was when we were using prompt cards. So it is an absolute mishmash. And this was where I was testing a product called Multex. So it's in here somewhere. I think it's this. Couldn't tell you now. This is the back cover. So I also have taken this art journal and ripped pages out of it for different things. This happens to be, just so you know, just for a point of reference, this is a Strathmore Mixed Media Visual Journal, and this is the 9 by 12 size. Hey, CB. Glad, I hope you're, are you back home from your retreat? I hope you're having a good time. And by the way, the um, Soul Makers Retreat, the Sacred Sacred Makers Soul Retreat. I am not going to be teaching at. I've been telling you for weeks that I was going to be teaching at. The classes did not fill, and so I'm not going. I'm not going to participate this year. Hopefully next year, whenever the next time comes around. But anyway, so I'm not going to be... Uh, if I encourage you to go. There are still some classes. I don't know how many, but there are classes that are going to go on at the retreat. So... Please um, support Kyla and Damon in that effort if you can do that. Fortunately, I had not made my plane reservation, so that was a good thing. Anyway, back to this. So here is um, the art journal page that we are going to play around with. And so this one has just some scraped paint on it, which doesn't make any difference. It'll just be something in the background. Oh, it's no worries. No worries. Nope. No worries. I was really looking forward to it, but it's okay. It is not a big deal. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some... I have a magazine. I'm not quite sure what I did with it. I think I might... Let's see if I know what I did with it. I don't know that I... I may have put it away already. I have a magazine that was one of those ones you can kind of pick up or they send them to you in the mail. Oh, here it is. So it's one of those they send to you in the mail. It's an advertising, you know, advertising the whole area out there, complete with maps, which are completely useless for me. This is good. The only thing that the only thing that these maps are good for for me, <laughs> the only thing. Where is there a map? I just showed them to you. The only thing that this is good for is art journaling. <laughs> you guys. The map is pointless for me. I cannot follow it. I can if you made me go from here to there using a map, using one of these, I you might as well just you know, plan my funeral. <laughs> it's absolutely pointless. Yep, I can barely use the app on my phone. That is the truth. 
there are some things in this world that I am useless about. There's a lot of things I can do. There's the, but the rest of the things I, that I'm not good at, I am completely useless. One time with Clausman, he was, he was, that man was irritating me. <laughs> that man was irritating me. I know it's hard to believe. Should not speak ill of the dead. I know, but you know, he, if he was here, he'd be talking about it too. That's a good thing he's not. Anyway, <clears throat> um, he loves map. He just loved maps, paper maps. Loved paper maps. And one time, um, our son went to a camp in South Missouri called Canacook, and he went there every year. We went there every year, people, every year for 10 years. CB is directionally challenged. Is that what we call it? <laughs> oh, that'd be fun, Tracy. Yeah, that race has been trying to get me to do that for a long time. Um, she says, maybe you could do classes at a big hotel in your town and we could meet you there. Um, race has been trying to get me to do that for a long time. And we actually looked into and got close to planning a retreat in Santa Barbara, California on the ocean that was going to be stunning, stunningly beautiful location, which is a long way for me to go, but it just was going to be the ideal location. Here where I live, it's hard to get here. Um, you know, the major airports are 125, 150 miles away from me. So it is a challenge to get here. There is a regional airport. The problem with it, although it's really a, a good little airport, the problem with it is that sometimes the flights don't fly. So we have flights that come in here from Chicago and from Dallas, and I think those are the two, only two places right now. And if the flights come in, it's perfect. It is perfect because you are, you know, you're right here. And, but they don't always fly because sometimes there's weather in Chicago, sometimes there's weather in Dallas, sometimes there's weather here, and it will ground the flights. So it's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, would you? Hi, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Barbara, thank you. Concentrate on what you need to do. Hello, Amalia. So, anyway, um, yeah. So those maps in that little magazine I just showed you, that's only for art journal purposes. That's all. I was asked the other day to, you know, because I was really wanting a cup of coffee. And so the driver said, um, well, look up and see where the nearest Starbucks is. I couldn't even do that. I said, never mind. I don't need a cup of coffee that bad. That's <laughs> how bad it is. I need I need remedial directions on how to use that stuff. Ray, if Race is here, he will give me so much trouble. Good, Dana. <laughs> um, we're close to Kansas City or St. Louis, and so that you know those both have good sized airports that come in anyway. So, all right, let's go back here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just kind of pull out some, we're just going to kind of mess around with this a little bit, you guys, and just kind of play with things. These were, these are um, images that came from that little magazine I just showed you. And I thought they would make a pretty good background for this. So I thought we'll just play around with this for a while today and see what we get accomplished. And I'm going to tell you about going to Burrow Days. So I went to Burrow Days in Fair Play, Colorado. I didn't even know there was such a thing. I do now. I know that they are now. Okay, so there's some stuff on the bottom. Um, 
Let's see. I'm just looking at what what things, what images I yanked out of here. Okay, so there's some cool rocks. Maybe we'll do this with this rock, huh? So I thought we'd just kind of incorporate these some of these images while I talked about burrow days. So burrow days, let me see. The, uh, they have races. They have burrow races. And they have llama races, you guys. Llama races. Has anybody here ever been to burrow days? Has anybody been to burrow days? They The burrow is, you know, like a somebody's going to call me about this, you know, because I'm going to say the wrong thing, but a burrow is like, is a pack animal. I don't know if it actually is a donkey or if it's related to a donkey. I didn't, I didn't look that stuff up because I didn't really care that much. Anyway, um, so burrow days is to honor the burrow and um, because the burrow was a pack animal and used during mining. Um, that looks kind of cool used during mining expeditions and all that sort of thing. So I thought we might put some of this in here and then maybe we'll put in a sky in the background. Maybe we'll put the sky in first. What do you think? And then not only do they have, not only do they have the burrow days and burrow races, you know, like that, they have llama races. Yes. They have llama races, and we got there in time to see the llama, the end of the llama race, which was so funny. It was great. Okay, so let's go back down here. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm going to, I think, put those on there, is I'm going to put in some sky. So let's see if we can find some sky colors in my, um, I ordered a set of paint from Amazon. They're all apple barrel because I thought they would be fun to use on the jelly plate uh, for the class that I was going to teach. So we're just going to pick out some colors here. We'll crack this out. Apple, berries, apple barrel is not expensive paint. Gotta find my palette here. I do with the palette. Just a minute, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to get out these blues. They're inexpensive, but I like the assortment of colors that these came in. And it was a, an easy, easy way to get people, you know, give people an idea of how to get a nice assortment of colors, but not have to spend a lot of money. You just store the art supplies, I understand. <laughs> you can never have too much paint, you guys. You can never have too much paint. And I, Apple Barrel is not a paint that I normally work with very much, but it was sure easy to find it online which was great okay so we're gonna put we're gonna paint some sky in here and a lot of it may get covered up and uh, that's okay we don't care do we but I think what we'll do and we may actually do this next week we'll get the background kind of put in and talk about what we're gonna do but there's a technique where you can take an image like this. This is a photograph that I took. And if you look at this llama's face, the reason I love this face, look at the teeth. Those are some teeth that have never been brushed, you guys, never been brushed. But I love this llama, and he was almost smiling at me when I took the picture. And uh, so I thought it would be fun to use that image and do what's called a paint over. We're going to paint over the image. So that should be fun to do, I think. So you start with an image like a magazine or a print or something, and then you paint over it and um, kind of make it your own, give it that kind of painterly look. So I thought we'd do, we'd do that. But we're going to make it an actual art journal. 
I did not take no I didn't because Jan Jan gave me Jan sent me I think it was last year um, Jan sent me a llama a stuffed llama that was absolutely adorable I'll get it I'll bring it down here and show you guys next week a week if I can remember to do it um, an adorable stuffed llama so cute no drama llama I didn't know that we were um, going to be going to said drama no drama llama races um, I just had no idea so there you go I had no idea so she didn't get to go with me I'm just putting some paper to protect the page after this like it matters <laughs> like it matters anyway it's just so I don't slot paint into it and if I would have any sense whatsoever I would use a bigger paintbrush but that means finding the paintbrushes today and as we know sometimes you can find stuff and sometimes you can't so I'm just gonna slop in a uh, background here And I've got fans blowing and the air conditioner on, so it's going to dry this paint really fast, you guys, really, really fast. Another reason a person really should use um, a bigger paintbrush. That's okay. We're just going to, you know what? We're just going to go with the flow. We're just going to go with the flow. I hope you guys are okay with that. Um paint's working pretty well for me I have to say thank you apple apple barrel the closer you get to the horizon line the lighter get some white here the lighter it will um, the color will become so we're going to add some white into this so these are craft acrylics this is more of an artist grade student grade acrylic so they um, we went to the borough days and it was really fun got there in time to see the llama race there's a llama race there's a borough race and so once I get this kind of slapped on here and I'm going to give it a chance to dry because we're going to uh, put in some we're going to finger paint some clouds into this I'm just going to go ahead and just add this all the way down um, because it'll just give us a background to go over and I really don't care um, really don't care too much about what goes on down here because this is all going to get probably glued over with the images I pulled out of that magazine. So once the, I get this on here, then what we're gonna do is I'll tell you a little bit more about the rules of the race, because it's very official. You know, it's very official, the rules of the race. And um, the one that I saw was the llama, the llama race, and they apparently have different activities with llamas. And um, there were even a couple of alpaca there as well those were cute I mean they're all cute I think they all spit though don't you think isn't that right they all spit I don't think that's cute <laughs> I don't think that's cute a bit but you know hey so I'm just using um, X marks back and forth just to get some color on here then it'll give us a place to start from you gotta get something on here you know on the background even though there was paint down there it wasn't the color that I wanted so you know and I don't care about this with the spiral thing some people get really upset with those and they'll go in there and paint them and stuff yeah I don't you know sometimes you just need to loosen up and you just need to slap some paint on something right just a little slap on the paint 
and just enjoy the process of seeing where it goes because I have no idea where this is going to go other than the fact that I printed out that black and white image of the llama that I took which I thought was really cute. I love that they look like they're smiling at you and I love that you know. Okay so all right, basically that's, you know, it's not 100% covered, but it's covered well enough, and it's not a real thick coat of paint either. I'll slap a little bit more over here just to kind of get some paint on the edges. So we got something to go from. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so you can see what we did. See how fast we did that? Not bad. Not not bad. Um, I like llamas because they don't pretend you know for absolutely certain whether they like you or not. There you go. That is kind of true. Yeah, that is kind of true. Um, uh, they even do agility trials with llamas. No kidding. I'll be darned. I had no idea. And they do spit. Yes, yes. Agility trials with llama. That is funny. So today I have on my cruddy, my cruddy shirt so that I don't slop paint all over myself. So anyway, got plenty of paint left. You know, when you have paint like this, see that puddles of paint there? You can take this and then you can spread it in your art journals just like I did on these other pages. Um, you know, just scrape it with a, a credit card or something or a gift card or whatever. You can spread that around and that gives you a start on another page. So anyway, okay, so I'm going to tell you about the llamas. The Llama Rama, okay, you ready for this? This is while, this is the break while this is drying. The Llama Rama, which is what we saw, um, is the longest running organ and tissue donation awareness event in the state of Colorado. How cool is that? It's sponsored by the Rocky Mountain Rural Health Donor Alliance and DonateLifeColorado.org. In 2022, our entries will be limited to 26 teams. And then there was information about who to call. So, um, and then they also have a llama rally, but we saw the llama rama, that's what we saw. And when the llamas were coming in, I think the rules, they're very specific rules. And I don't know exactly how it worked. I don't know. If, I'm assuming that they got different people to sponsor their teams, you know, so that they raised money for the um, tissue and organ donation. But they were all costumed. The people were costumed. There was one group of people that were costumed like wizards. There was another, <laughs> there was another one that was costumed the whole group had on yellow tutus and I got a great picture of the llama from the rear with the, one of the people from the rear with their yellow tutus on. It is a great shot. We may do something with that sometime. It was funny. And then there were um, a different other, uh, just all different kinds of costume things. And then there was a person up on a balcony on a hotel, an old hotel, who was doing the announcing who was hysterical. And she started out with, now, the when the llamas come, uh, the rules are something like this. I don't know if it's exactly right or not, but something to the effect of that I think they had a four-person team plus the llama. And I've forgotten how far they had to go. But it was, it was like they had to go through water and they had to do different things. And all the people had to come back. The whole team had to come back from this route, however long it was. And so did the llama. If you didn't have your ent your entire team uh, with you when you came back, it disqualified you for the prizes. <laughs> it was really funny because some of them, some of them, the people came back, but the llama took off, and some people had the llama and one person. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> it was really funny. So anyway, it was it was great, and. Um, Okay, this is probably dry. Yeah, okay, so we'll come back down to this. Let's see. Um, and they did have they did have um, prizes for the various things. I don't know that they did for the Drama Llama, but they did have various prizes for like the, the burrow race and that kind of stuff. So it was pretty funny. 
Anyway, okay, so we got this. It's dry, dry enough. Let's put some clouds in the sky. And um, these kinds of clouds, these are the kind of clouds I like to do. I'm going to get a um, baby wipe, which is kind of damp. And that way I'll have something to clean my fingers off. And also, if I need it for painting these clouds, I'll have it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so this is just a baby wipe, so it's, you know, by its very nature, is wet. So I have some fresh white paint here. Okay, right here. So I'm just going to get some paint. This is way more paint than a person would ever have to have. And hopefully I don't ruin my images down here, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So we're just going to finger paint some fluffy clouds. One of the most beautiful things about um, being out there was the beauty, I'm telling you, the beauty of creation, you guys. Ugh, it was eye candy for Barb. That is a fact. It was just staggeringly beautiful. I have so many things to tell you about, so, so many experiences to tell you about. Can't do it all today, so you're going to have to come back. I have enough fodder. I have enough stories and enough fodder that I can tell you stories about things from now until next, I don't know when, <laughs> until I don't know when. So we're just going to kind of slop in uh, some clouds. Just so we kind of have something back here in the background. I can always, you know, paint them, paint more, add more clouds later, but. The, so many of the clouds, of course, we were up so high. So many of the clouds looked like it must have been somebody's job to put hang the clouds in the sky. They were so unbelievably gorgeous. Just so gorgeous, you know. I'm just trying to get some... We'll see how much um, how much paint I end up slopping, how much I wear on the shirt. One of the cool things we saw coming back was um, a rainbow. And the rainbow just happened to be, you could see it against the evergreens on the mountainside. It was phenomenal. Every so often I'd have to say, Stop! I need the picture of that. <laughs> so I'd get pictures. and It was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's do... Maybe that's enough clouds. Let's see. Maybe we'll do a little bit more here. Anyway, so the llama race... I'm telling you, watching those llamas come in, and those llamas just like to strut their stuff. Boy, they just strutted themselves. And, and it was like they were looking at everybody like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm I'm a very cool, I'm a very cool creature. And they just look at you like they were very, very important. Very, very important. So what I'm trying to do is just to capture some of the, the cotton candy feature of clouds. So if you have never tried to paint clouds with your finger, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You get some good um, good texture, some good practice painting with your fingers. I have a lot more success painting with my fingers than I do with a brush when it comes to clouds. So, all right. Hello, Shu. Hello, hello. And to anyone that I didn't 
say hello to. Thank you for being here with us today. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, so we're going to call that good for now on the clouds. You can see how fast we put those in there. And if this was a, an actual landscape, you know, we'd do a lot more to it. But um, this needs to be a little straighter here. One of the things about stuff with landscapes is you don't want things to be too, un, you know, going uphill or downhill or whatever because, you know, you can, your eye will rebel at that a whole lot. So that looks a little bit better. And also looking in a computer monitor or taking pictures of things like this, you know, can give you a better feel for how things look. Um, you can pick it up in the monitor or in a photograph when you can't see it with your eye. Okay, I'm just getting the bulk of the paint off of my paintbrush here. I'll clean it later, but i got to get some of it off. Um, let me give this a quick dry. Hopefully my heat gun's plugged in. It is. Yay! I'm going to get rid of the paint before I stick my arm in it. That's always a good plan. So while this is going, while I'm drying this, I thought I would um, read you the evolution of burrow racing. Yes, the evolution, sorry, the evolution of burrow racing. In 1949, when the challenge went out to anyone with the fortitude to race from Leadville to Fair Play, because they're both in Colorado, for a $500 prize, every mountain town in the Rockies came alive the following weeks trying to lure racers into representing them. Um, Mosquito Pass became a mecca for aspiring racers. The local bar bars reported that those runners consumed, consuming more beer were producing faster practice times. <laughs> so there you go. The Fair Play Flume, that's the magazine or, or paper, I'm not sure which, reported that there were more burrows escaping from their pasture than they ever remembered. There were weekly reports of the status of Fair Play's local racer, racer, Ed somebody, and the whereabouts of his burrow, who was named Prunes the Fourth. A lot of local money was backing this team, so the town was on alert about the escape tactics of Prunes. On race day, 21 entrants showed up for the start. Okay, this is long, back when it was all starting, people. After a hectic start, a racer from Como, Melville Sutton, uh, took the, that's the guy's name, Como is the town, Melville Sutton was the guy, took the lead and was the first to, to the top of the pass. The trip down the pass had local favorite Ed, whatever his name was, battling for the lead with Melville Sutton. In Park City, Sutton pulled ahead after the course finally took its toll on the other guy's knees and feet. Um, now, hold on just a minute. i got to show this. True enough, Linda. In the end, it was Melville, Sutton, and Whitey for first place, and Ed, whatever his name is, and Prunes the fourth for second. So they must have found Prunes the fourth. Other finishers of the first uh, race, the first race were, and there was a whole bunch of them. The excitement of his this first race continued the following years. Um, star someone and KOA, I, I suppose Co Coa, that must be the the um, borough returned each year and the race soon received national coverage on the Dave Garraway show and on national sports shows. There were 40 racers to start the 1955 race. Um, the lure of prize money attracted racers from all walks of life to challenge the pass. Okay, there you go. That's more than you ever wanted to know about a borough race. Aren't you excited? Uh, <clears throat> here's a little bit. Well, I'll read more of this in a minute. This is this is dry. We we have to keep going here. We have to keep going. Otherwise, we're never going to get the llama on here. We'll have too much drama, llama drama. All right. So we're going to add this um, little bit from the magazine, and we're going to add this back here. 
so that we've got some background for our llama, right? And then we'll add some, we'll paint some more stuff on here at some point. All right. So this is going to be our background, and we'll have our clouds back there. And, you know, I'm not intending for this to be for real. This is just for fun. This is for funs, people. Just for funs. All right. So um, anytime you put down thin magazine paper, which this is what this is, it's very thin, it's going to wrinkle and carry on. And you know what? We just can't care about that. We just cannot care about that. And so what I'm going to be using is Golden Matte Medium, which is what this is, matte medium. This is pretty, about half full, so I can't tip it over too much. So we're going to put this piece down first. So I'm going to just slap some matte medium on the back of this. Ideally, you wouldn't paste um, necessarily on top of the background that you just painted, but it's an art journal page, so we don't care too much. So I'm going to put a nice coat of this on here, and then I'm going to put, and you know, you guys, uh, you know, if you want to really know how to do collage really well, you need to watch Dee Dee Willingham. There are people who do this far better than I do. Um, and quite honestly, if you really want to know how to do it, you should go watch them. Anybody is going to be better at this particular art form than I am, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. Because <laughs> I do. It's been a long time since I've done much art journaling with you guys, so I thought that would be, it might be fun for us to do that. So. I'm just going to smooth it on here, and if it goes down smooth, great. If it doesn't go down smooth, I just really don't. I'm just not going to care, you know. And if you get a big um, wrinkle, if you peel it up quick enough, you can put some more glue down. If you don't peel it up quick enough, then it's not going to go down smoothly. You're going to get wrinkles, and you're going to get, you know, ugliness and you got to just kind of be okay with that you know because it's the nature of it's kind of the nature of the beast okay so we're going to kind of it went down smoother than i expected it to tell, tell you the truth all right so we're going to do the same thing with this one down here i'm going to just slap some matte medium and i'm not watching the chat right now so i hope you guys are doing okay um, it's hard to watch the chat and do some of this stuff that dries quickly. Kind of have to, kind of have to go with the flow. So, so I'm going to put some more a nice coat of matte medium down here, like so. And then let's put this down on top of this, I'm giving myself a little bit of room. over here and let this kind of hang off the page. Okay, good enough. All right, let's see if we can get it down here. You just can't, I just don't worry about the wrinkles, you know? I just really don't. It's like whatever, 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 whatever. All right. So I'm just going to put down enough matte medium to get it to stick. Matte medium can be used to thin paints or to add texture to paints. There's all different kinds of things to texturize your paints. Um, you can also use it as glue, which is what we're doing here. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm just going to give this a quick top coat. Just a quick top coat, which could make it wrinkle even more, but you know, sometimes it dries down and the wrinkles go away, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, you just, you know, you kind of just got to be okay with that because the whole point of this is going to be the llama anyway, so you know, we don't really care about it. this. Is just background, just background, okay? So, I'm just gonna, all I'm after here is just to make sure it sticks. Okay. All right. 
Good enough. Okay, I'm going to let that sit a minute. So it looks pretty good with the clouds behind it. If we take this um, paper out behind, you can see it a little bit more. And one of the things that drives me crazy, it doesn't a lot of people, but it drives me crazy, is I can't stand stuff hanging off the edge. I don't know why. I just don't like it. And so I will come in and um, get rid of that because I don't like that. Some people don't mind that. I would rather that it looked like it was running off the page, you know, like that. Like it's just kind of going off into nowhere. Okay, so I'm going to, um, when you do that though, if you do it when the stuff is wet, the glue is wet, you need to wipe off your scissors, otherwise it's not good. Um, okay, hi Alicia. Good, good. Hi Kathy. Need a mountain goat? No, we're going to do a llama. Oh yeah, this is about the llama. Um, hi Cheryl. You've been to Leadville? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Linda says, drink too much beer and you turn into a jackass. That's right. We got t-shirts that said that the logo or the uh, phrase, the slogan, that's what it is. Slogan is get your ass up the pass. <laughs> I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. All right, let me um, cut this off too because I have some of it hanging off the edge over here as well. Barb is just that gets that annoyed about things hanging off the edge. See that little bitty thing? That little tiny thing? I, yeah, I know. Irritates me. Since it's all about me. Okay, so we got that going on. Where's my llama? Okay, here's my llama. Okay, my llama is going to be hanging out right about we might let the llama kind of hang in off, come in off the edge. Let it come over a little bit here. That could be fun. Okay, I'm going to put this back under here because, um, you know, our glue might seep down and it might stick everything together down there. We can't have that. We just cannot have that. Mm -mm. And because this is um, copy paper. This is heavier than this. This would be ideal for using a little um, thicker glue like a matte gel, matte gel instead of the fluid. But you know, it is what it is. Um, I need something to glue on. Just a minute. And we're just gonna use this scrap paper and we're gonna just slap some glue down here. Yep, absolutely, Tara. She was reminding us that um, rubbing alcohol can help take the goo off the scissors. Indeed, good reminder. Absolutely good reminder. If it's really bad, there's a construction adhesive remover that can get it too. All right, so we've got some glue. And now we're going to put some more glue quickly down here. Let's see if we can get our llama down here before everything dries. Because everything is really dry here right now. All right, let's get our llama so that we have it off there. Yeah, so his ear is going to kind of hang off the edge, but, you know, it's good when things hang off the edges. Um, it really is good when they hang off the edge. It tends to give more perspective to what you're doing, and it just makes it more interesting. Okay, and this is a um, laser print. So this was from, it's a picture I took at the llama race, after the llama race, because I just thought this llama was so cute. Man, he was cute. I don't even know if it was he. But anyway, this llama was cute. 
and it was strutting around there talking to everybody just like yeah I'm here mm-hmm I'm here this is my world and I'm gonna let you be part of it for a little bit and you can pet me and talk to me they each had a I think you call it a halter I'm not good with you know stuff like that but I think it was a halter so I don't know if the llama could still spit on you around the halter <laughs> probably I don't know anyway I didn't see nobody reacted you know like they were getting spit on so got a wrinkle under it but you know what we're not going to care it's an art journal page you guys it's an art journal page yep <laughs> Tara's going to grill and she said it's dry all day so, until she wants to grill and then it starts pouring yeah that's the way that goes mm -hmm. all right so I'm just going to wipe the glue out of my brush stick it in the water um, different people have different opinions about what I'm going to show you but this is what I do I use petroleum jelly and I put it because I haven't done this for quite a while I put it on the threads of the jar and the top of the jar and then I put the lid back on it I don't do that every single time but I do it frequently and that will stop your lids from sticking um, some people use plastic wrap or wax paper and they drop it on the floor. Um, to keep it from, keep those lids from sticking, I prefer to use the Vaseline or petroleum jelly. That's my preference. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the glue water. And while I'm doing that, we're going to have a little tea break. Um, is it better to have a laser print? The laser print's not going to run. And some inkjet printer prints will not run. It depends on your ink. It depends on your printer. Um, but since I'm going to paint over this with acrylic paint later, probably next week, since I'm going to paint over it, uh, it's fine to use the laser the laser copy I have both a laser printer and an inkjet printer both super cheap super super cheap printers um, I think I paid a hundred I've paid more for the the toner for the laser printer I have paid more for that than I ever paid for the printer that's where they get you and the inkjet printer is an HP it's the cheapest I, I know they don't even sell this one anymore it's the cheapest printer that they had it was like seventy nine dollars the laser printer was ninety nine and I've used them for ages. So. But a toner based copy, which is what the laser one is, the toner based copy will not run. The inkjet, on some, it just depends, some, um, some of your prints will run. So what you have to do is you can do one of two things. You can either spray them with a matte fixative or a, a fixative spray of some kind and let them dry and sometimes that'll do it for an inkjet print that runs or um, you can just put it down and just very lightly go over the top of it with matte medium and that will also once it's dry that will fix it but the ink is likely to run but if you're going to paint over it anyway it really doesn't matter Um, okay. Any other questions? If you do have questions, put them in all caps for me. Dee Dee, yeah. <laughs> Dorothy says, Dee Dee makes it look effortless. I know, she does. Dee Dee is Dee Dee Willingham. If you do not want follow her, she's inky well on some platforms and ink well on others. If you don't follow her and you really like collage, you need to follow her because... She is the queen of collage, I tell you. And she broadcasts on Mondays and Wednesday mornings early. So you should follow her. 
besides that, she's one of the kind, most kind-hearted people. I'm just cutting the um, excess paper away because, I can't, guys, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. So I'm just cutting off the excess. I like, you know, some people when they do like art journal or um, junk journals and or they'll make a journal out of a book, you know, an old book, they'll rip out X number. They have a formula, man. They will rip out. Oh, my nose is itching. That means I'm going to kiss a fool, but good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that around here. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, they'll, you know, some, they don't like their, their journals to develop, develop an alligator mouth. And so they have a formula about how many pages they'll take out so that they make sure that that, um, that journal, you know, when they're done with the book and they add stuff to it and all that, they'll make sure that it is perfect, you know, so it closes and the book looks just like it did, um, for, you know, before they started it. I don't care. But this, having edges of stuff stick out, can't stand it. What is that? Why do we do that? Why do we give ourselves all these crazy things? Aw, oh, thank you, Jan. The no drama llama dental hygiene finance, <laughs> right? The poor thing. This poor thing. I tell you, this poor llama. This poor little llama. Look, dental hygiene fund. Look at those teeth. Look at those teeth. My favorite thing about this llama is that he, the llama looks like it's smiling, which I think is really funny. So anyway, so it's glued down. Um, I do have it. I let it extend off the edge here and here and down here at the bottom. So I've trimmed all that off because I like the way it looks better. So the next thing that I will do, what time is it? 2.18. I probably am not going to stream a whole lot longer today. Because, you guys, I'm dragging. <laughs> you know that thing about get your ass up the pass, the, the slogan for the, the um, borough days? I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't if my life depended on it today because I'm just, I'm dragging, man. And it's not dragging it up the mountain, that is for sure. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about the boroughs? Um, here you go. Some of the most exciting races, these are the borough races, not the llama races, were in the 1960s when some marathoners decided to challenge the sport that was dominated by miners. At the time, the race was dominated by nine-time winner Joe somebody of Leadville. He won his first race in 1955 and had some kind of special rapport with his boroughs. Now that's what everybody wants is a rapport with their boroughs that kept him in first place for over 20 years. I think he was rigging the race, don't you? His battles with marathoner Steve Matthews became legendary, showing that it takes more than being a good runner to win this race. The other guy was the last of the true miners to win the race, but he beat the best runners of the time, including some Olympic hopefuls who took the challenge. In the 1970s, the local mining industry declined rapidly with many of the miners having to re relocate or take on new jobs, but the spirit of the race continued. During this time, a cross-country coach from Arvada, Lee Court Camp, uh, exposed borough racing to runners on the front range. Lee won the race two times and had a string of well-trained burrows. He inspired his high school teams to train with them, and in the process, won numerous state championships along with the, the developing Olympic runner Joe Sinclair, who also went on to win the 1977 race. Many of the present runners trained with Lee and have run his burrows. Can you, did you guys know that this was a thing? This is not just a thing, this is an important thing, people. Important. I mean, it's going to change the world if you do this. The current group of racers is probably the most diverse in history. Eight time Ardell Bowes, a math professor at the, the School of Mines in Golden, was the first to break the four hour barrier, which was felt to be impossible. It's like breaking the four minute mile, huh? Or whatever it was. 
Tom Sobol finally broke the seemingly unbreakable record of Joe, whatever his name was, in 2002 with his 10th win. Tom also holds the course record of 3 hours and 44 minutes for the 30 mile court. 30 miles, you guys. Hal Walters, a freelance rider, has won the race three times in the past six years. As long as the pass is there and a record to be broken, runners and burrows will line up the last weekend of July to get their ass up the pass. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I knew that you guys would all need this in your life. You all needed this information. You needed to know these things about burrow races and the burrow days in fair play. Colorado and you needed to know that not only did were there burrows but there were llama races as well so so there is I'm gonna let this get good and dry this page and then uh, you, would you guys like to see how to do the paint over technique next week and then we'll play with that and see if we can turn it into something because we don't want it to look like a photograph we actually want this whole thing to look like it's been painted so we'll do some stuff. So does that sound okay to you guys? We'll do that next week. I hope it sounds okay because I think that's what we're going to plan. Unless my muse, which is typically has a mind of her own, she is likely to show up next week 10 minutes before the stream and say, oh no, we're not doing that. We're going to do this other thing. That has been known to happen as well. So you guys need to come up with, by Dorothy, so you guys um, see if you can come up with some good quotes for me for next week that we'll add on this page somewhere about um, no drama llama no llama drama something see if you can come up with something for me hi violet okay that's what we're gonna do so yes i will um i'm gonna go for today thank you so much for joining me and um I'm so glad to be back and to be with you all again. Tomorrow's the VIP class. VIP members, I will get your email out later today um, after I go sort of chill just a little bit. Be sure and check out howtogetcreative.com. You're all welcome to come over there and hang out with us. And I would love to do that. The live, the live session for the VIP members is tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. And check your email for the link, which is not there yet. I have to write the email. And I think that's all I have to say. Hi, Joy. Um, anybody that I didn't say hello to you, um, thank you for being here. And I'm glad to be back with you. And I will tell you more about my trip. I took tons of pictures. We did some really fun things. I will tell you all about that. And uh, thanks for joining me and spending your afternoon with me on a Friday for a No Drama Llama Friday. And I will see you again next week. So remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.